Uh, okay, we're good. Let's go. This is my first coaching session with this, so... I know how to coach, but I haven't coached, like, exactly like this before, so... Give me some time. But we're going to start. This is the replay you gave me, the second one. The first one you said was not as good. So I'm going to start off just by looking directly at your perspective. And let's see how it goes. Uh, be Before, while I'm watching this, a little bit about myself as a player. Ooh. A little bit about myself as a player is that I peaked at 1660 MMR, which is nowadays Grand Champion 2. And I've played and won a few different Rocket League championships. I have played, not cha like leagues and stuff, tournaments. Um, I have have played at GC3 level, and I can stay there, just not consistently. And I generally think that my play style is more smart and fast and non-mechanical. So, already through the first 45 seconds of your replay, I've noticed a few things. For example... Your kickoff. You single jumped into it, which it's much more efficient to flip into your kickoff. Not only is it efficient, but you'll get more precise on where the ball goes and where you want to put it. And here, when you come back, you need to realize that your teammate is in front of you. So if you, you can see my mouse, I think. Let me check if you can see my mouse. Yeah, you can see my mouse. If you stay right here where my mouse is, while your teammate is going for this ball, because your teammate's in front of you, he's going to go for the ball. If you stay right there, then you'll be able to block any shot from anywhere other than if your teammate own goals here, which... And instead of doing that, you double commit with him, which makes you both waste boost and puts you both in the wrong position. You continue to use boost up the wall after double committing. So you just grabbed 100 not too long ago, and you're already at 30. The touch wasn't bad, but that's a mechanical error. So I'm not going to I'm not gonna point out mechanical errors that you like can't really fix without time. That landing could have used some work. This is technically mechanical, but this is easily fixable. Just make sure you air roll so where your wheels are always landing directly on the wall so you have a really quick and easy recovery from when you land. Oh, did you miss that boost? Or was it just not there? I guess it wasn't there. Hmm. Good save after realizing your teammate missed. And you're going for another off-the-wall play. If you want to go for an off-the-wall play, that's fine. But both times you've gone for an off-the-wall play, you've hit it way too hard on your first touch. Try hitting it a little bit lighter on your first touch, and that'll make it way easier for you to follow up your own touches. And wall plays are really risky if you don't have already very good mechanics. Yeah, both times they basically just asked. They've both times your wall plays have worked as a pass to the other team, and you've wasted all your boosts by using it. Here you go way too far back. I don't know if it's for a boost or whatever, but if you just stay in like around this circle here in the middle of the field and grab all the small boost pads around there, then you'll have plenty of boost for any attack and stay in the play. So a touch like that, you could follow up and try and score. But because you're too far back, you gave your opponents a lot of time. But they didn't use their time, so that's lucky for you. But if you're in a higher level lobby, then 
they would have really been able to clear it easily and probably gotten a counterattack that would have ended up in a goal. Oh, here, here you have 50 boost, so there's really no reason to use boost to get the big pad. There's a small pad here, 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 here. There's a bunch of small pads, you know? So if you go around grabbing those and not boosting to the big pad, that'll put you in a better position for your teammate's eventual center, which he missed, so yeah. And then, but after your teammate missed the center, you jumped really early. You could have just kept driving towards the towards the ball before jumping, and that would make your aerial for one more powerful, and you would use less boost and also more controlled. Um, because that guy missed, and Sim Junior here hits the ball like relatively hard, and your teammate is behind you. Your teammate will have a way better touch on this ball than you do. So, and he also has more boost because he just grabbed that pad. So you hitting that doesn't help your teammate's situation at all. Although your teammate was able to recover from it as if he expected you to hit it, which is interesting. But it works out. You got a shot on. Uh, unfortunate, you just hit that the ball a little bit low on your car. Instead of hitting the very front nose of your car, like, uh, you should hit, to get the most power out of the, out of any aerial that you can, you want to hit the front nose or the front corner of your car because that has the least surface area or something, so it gives most, more power. But instead you hit slightly under your nose, more on your wheels, and that made your shot really not powerful. Which I know is a mechanical error, but it's good to think about it when you're shooting. That boost grab is okay. But the problem is that since you're already facing this way and the ball's going the other way, it's better to go to the left here and grab the uh, that boost pad. Because now you're going in front of your teammate. And it just makes it more complex for your teammate to look at. Your teammate might be thinking, oh, he's going to hit it behind me or something because he doesn't know I'm here. And he, he's probably not thinking that, but it's very possible that he is. So rotating towards your teammate and towards the ball when you're going back is oftentimes can, very confusing and can lead to very bad situations. That was good midfield positioning. Right here, this is good. But as soon as your as soon as your teammate missed, you need to cheat up a little bit because you know that they're gonna have a free touch on the ball. But you waited a little bit for their first touch, and then they have full control when you challenge. And that's what led to the goal. It's not your teammate's fault for missing. Well, it partially is. But you could have easily fixed the mistake. Or actually, your teammate didn't miss. It was just a bad touch. But as as soon as you see that they're going to have a free touch. You want to cheat up and then make sure you block all angles. It's fine that you didn't end up like that, though. One goal is not a big deal. Ooh. Here, I would make sure to go up on the wall. Going up on the wall, for one, uses less boost. So you're going to be more boost efficient. And it's also generally easier to hit the ball with, and it's easier to recover. Teammate got demoed again, that's kind of funny. Oh, that was a good shot. Let's see. Yeah, the opponent just didn't know what to do, and you took advantage. That was good. Also a good angle. Let's see kickoff goal, it looks like. You off the wall, miss, that's fine. Hmm. I don't like that you turned around after you missed. You should have gone back a little bit and made sure that the G J A guy didn't hit it. Because if he did hit it while you're turning around like that, then you're screwed and you're going to get scored on. 
but both the opponents missed the ball, so it worked out for you. And by the way, at the end of this video, I'm going to be saying like general things you should work on first. I'm just mentioning every single mistake you make now, which this will be overwhelming. I know. <laughs> Wait, I didn't look at the kickoff. <laughs> I need to see it. Did I pause it? No. So you single jump into the kickoff and that makes you always lose it and you don't have control over to where you lose it. You're too far back again here, giving them space. And people with space have an opportunity to dribble or do a mechanical play and it can and it's really easy to beat one on one or one on two. But they mess up with their space, so you're able to take advantage. Got a good 50. Good boost conservation, although when you're flipping back, you could take this middle route of boost right down the middle of the field with the small pads after they cleared it, and then you could be like pretty much constantly boosting and still keep the same, if not more boost, than you started with. And then you'd get back faster. There's a few things that you did here. First off, you turned around more in the middle of the net. So if he shot up behind you, then there was no way you could save it. And secondly, you positioned your car. Uh, if you know soccer terms, or in Europeans it would be football terms then you positioned your car not goal side you need your car to be in between the ball and the goal if you're going for a 50 or a dribble that way if they do like surprise you with a challenge or something then it it won't go towards your goal most likely but because you position yourself between the wall and the goal I mean between the ball and the wall then when they challenge, it just goes directly in net. I like the idea of slowing it down though. This kickoff, I would say p defending in a position in a kickoff like this is never a good idea unless you are up by like one with one second left or something. But because you decided to defend so early here, it gives the other team a chance to do whatever they want. And they bumped each other, which is lucky. But if they didn't do that, then it would have been free. So there's two options for kickoff. You either want to cheat and go up to the ball like Sim Jr. did, or you want to go for the big pad on either one of the sides, either one of the corners. You're not flipping into this boost here. Small detail, but if you flip into that big boost, then you'll get there faster. This touch... If you came more up on the ball instead of out on the ball, it would have gone up and farther and had more power. But your touch more acts as a pass to the other team, which a lot of your wall touches do, but a lot of everyone's wall touches in plat do, so that makes sense. That was a good follow-up on your own touch. Ooh, you did not need to go all the way back for boost here. You still have 50 boost, you know? You can stay completely in the middle. You can grab a few boost pads. You'll be have plenty of boost. Even 58 boost is plenty to go for any ball on the in the whole field. So going for that boost not only wastes the boost pad for if your teammate needs it, but it also makes you out of position and way too far back, giving them lots of space. I'm not sure if you wanted to pass that to your teammate, but it was a really good pass to your teammate.
again, your wall touches just always go straight to the other team because they're not powerful enough. One thing I think I would re I'm going to recommend at the end is going to be very strong and powerful wall touches that you can work on, mechanical training. And that way you can get very strong touches that go past your opponent's head. Again, you're giving your, your opponent space to make a setup touch and then get a good what they want, like follow up. Which it works here because you got a good 50, but it doesn't always work. After you do that, you look kind of lost as if you don't know what to do. But because the guy came back so quickly anyways, it doesn't really matter. And then it looks like you want to turn and hit it again, but you realize your teammate is up for it. Which is good awareness that your teammate is up for it, but you should never go for that anyways because you should have trust in your teammate to go for that every time. So you just weren't bet like ready for this touch after your teammate messed up. This catch from you was a good idea. You just mechanically messed up, I think. So that was a goal because of a mechanical mistake. And again, make sure you're, that your car is in between the ball and the goal, not the uh, the wall and the ball. Did you do teammate? No, okay. Again, you're too far back here. You can be closer. And then you're just waiting for them to touch it, which if they're smart like that one, was a smart touch they'll hit it just away from you every time and again your touches just aren't quite as powerful as they could be especially off the wall they always end up as passes so definitely just working in free play and trying to hit the ball as hard as possible is a good idea I feel like when you're in offense and defense, you position similarly. Like, if the ball's in their half, you're way too far away from the ball. But when the ball's in your half, you're, like, ready to hit it on their half. Like, you're ahead of your teammate. If he, if he gets messed up or if he gets challenged or something, that's a free goal for the other team. Like, I get you want to pass, but for one, you're in plat. No one's going to pass you. And for two... It's very difficult to get a pass from that position that he was in. Looks like people aren't ready for your follow up touches. So, like, having, like, doing plays like this where you hit it once in the air and then follow it up seems to be really good for beating out one person in play. So, if you could do that more, that would be probably good like not overwhelmingly more but a few times oh you saved it <laughs> that recovery was really bad let's see how did you end up here i don't know why you turtled but make sure your wheels land on the ground or air roll so your wheels land on the ground every time and then things like that won't happen That was a good defensive play from your teammate. Good follow-up touch. Good 50 as well. Teammate got a good shot off, but I don't think it was on anyways, even if they did save it. That was a good center, but it wasn't away from the team from your the opponents. Think about it like this. Your teammate is farther away from the net than your opponents are. So you want to hit the... When you center the ball, especially off the wall, you want to hit it away from the net more than towards your teammate, if that makes sense. Not behind your teammate, because then that's a free net for them. But it's a good balance. Because you hit it... When you hit it in front of the net like that, it just goes straight to the opponent rather than towards your teammate. And that's that.
Yep. Okay, I think there's three things that you need to work on most. Uh, two things in training and one thing in game. In training, I want you to work in mostly free play. One, to warm up and just work in general on improving mechanics. And in free play, I just... I, I, instead of, like, going for shots every time, I think the best thing to do in free play is to just hit the ball as hard as you can. Like, you just go around the field like this and hit the ball. And then you go to the... Oh, I messed up. I'm not warmed up. <laughs> And just keep hitting the ball as hard as you can, and that'll improve your power touches so much. Oh, I messed up. Okay, well. And then another thing in free play that you need to do is constantly go off the wall. Like, I bet you already do this based on how you play it in the match. But, like, when you when you're here... Go off the wall like this, and instead of going for an air dribble or something, just get a touch and then try and follow it up. Doesn't matter if it's on net or whatever. Just get a touch and try and follow it up over and over and over again. And that'll help your air dribbles so much. Because you're learning, okay, I need to make this initial touch really soft. And then I'll be able to do things like this, right? And then... Eventually, you'll be able to get that really soft touch every time. Frick. You'll be able to get that really soft touch every time. And then with that, you can learn how to air dribble after you get that first touch. Because the first touch is the most important in any mechanical play. And then in-game, I think the best thing to work on for you would be making sure that your opponents don't have too much space, but also not being too close to them. The best way to work on this is playing ones, which I know nobody likes playing ones, but ones is honestly the best for both mechanics because you have the most time on the ball compared to any other playlist. And um, your positioning and shadow defense. So play a lot of ones and learn how to defend and like not only defend 1v1 plays, but also be able to see how much space you need to give people versus how much they need to be able to do things. And by learning that shadow defense and learning how much space people need, you'll be able to constrict people and make it so they can't leave. They can't hit the ball away from you or behind you or in front of you so they can get a good challenge. And I think that's going to be all. Uh, if you need anything else, don't hesitate to ask. And yeah, peace.